Hey everyone, Lisa here, and this is my demon, Bill. If you've read the book, you'll get it. Anyways, let me put him down and we'll start. This is my booktube premiere, so go easy on me. Today I'm going to be talking about The Amber Spyglass, written by Philip Pullman. It's the third book in his Dark Materials trilogy. We will be talking about all three books. There are some spoilers, so if that's something you're sensitive to, you're going to want to go read the books and come back to this video. But without further ado, let's roll those intro credits. First, I want to take you back to how I even stumbled across this trilogy. At the beginning of the year, I made one of those New Year's resolutions that nobody keeps, and I saw this list of 100 books that you should read before you die, according to the BBC. So if you're game for that challenge, I will put the link below if you want to read those books with me. And of course, this book, this trilogy was on that list. So the first book, it is called The Golden Compass, or in other areas of the world, it's known as Northern Lights, but they're the same book. This book features, we're introduced to a character named Lyra. She lives in a world where there are animals called demons. This is an animal that's attached to your soul. It's part of you physically in, in the sense that if you if you die, they, the animal disappears. You can feel its pain and hurt. And Lyra, she lives in this world and she has this friend named Roger and Roger gets kidnapped by the gobblers who happen to be led by Lyra's mother, Mrs. Coulter. So Lyra goes up north, she finds out that her mother and the ablation board are cutting or severing demons from these children. And of course, when you sever the demon from the child, they die. She, Lyra, of course, frees all the children. She rescues her father, who also happens to be in the north, and brings her friend Roger with him. However, there is a twist where her father ends up severing Roger's demon and opens up the bridge to the new world. And that's the end of book one. And then book two, which is the subtle knife, Lyra just crosses into the new world, doesn't give Roger a second thought, I guess too bad for him. And then we're introduced to a new character this time. This character is named Will. And Will and Lyra, they come into possession of the subtle knife, which is this knife that can cut into other worlds. So here we are at the Amber Spyglass. It's the last book. How is Philip Pullman going to bring everything together? So it does, the book starts off a little bit rocky because for the first 150 pages of this book, The Amber Spyglass, Lyra is in a cave, asleep, in a, like this trance-like state, kept, being kept captive by her mother. And then Will, after 150 pages, Will comes to rescue her. So I am cutting Philip Pullman a lot of slack here. One, I really have a lot of respect for him as an author. But two, he wrote this book in 2000. This was before Facebook. This was before the 30 second attention spans. This was before smartphones. Lots of people didn't even have cell phones. It was a different time. And also the second thing why I cut him a little bit of slack. As a creator, I understand when you have to, when you have a project and you're told you have to cut something, those characters come out of your heart. They come out of your soul. He spent seven years writing this trilogy to be told you have to cut something. For me personally, it's like cutting a part of my soul out with a knife. It's, it's very tough to make cuts. So I, I do understand that. That being said, the pacing was a little bit off in the beginning. So Will rescues Lyra. 
Lyra all of a sudden is concerned about Roger and needs to go visit him in the world of the dead. Wouldn't it be great if you had a knife that could cut into the world of the dead? Oh, well, would you know, Will has the subtle knife. They can just cut into the world of the dead. So Lyra and Will, they go into the world of the dead. They then cut a hole to the, you know, a different world so the dead can escape and vaporize and be part of the whole world again and everyone is happier. They meet up with the Malafa, um, Will and Lyra, and Mary Malone for a short period of time. They instantly fall in love and then they return home to their separate worlds never to see each other again. So first I will say one of the things that really helped me finish off this book because the pacing was a little bit off, I came across the audiobook from Philip Pullman reading this book and I've never said that said this about anybody before. So I really hope you're I can convey to you how special it was listening to him reading this book. He was enchanting, and, and I don't say that about anybody. His voice was enchanting. It was almost lyrical, and perhaps it was he was reading his own material, or maybe he just needs to consider a voiceover, a career. It was just really, really incredible and amazing. The other thing, they I really found the characters, Lyra and Will, both to be really endearing. These were characters that you wanted to root for. They both had missing parental figures and they were both really smart and brave. You could, you, you really wanted to cheer them on. So I did really appreciate that. And I loved this series so much. This is my favorite series of all time. And I did hear that there are, that Philip Pullman wrote two other books after The Amber Spyglass. One is 10 years before this time period and one is 10 years after this time period. So those two books I'm putting on my reading list for next year. So again, subscribe to my channel if you're interested in those books because I will definitely be reading those books and sharing those reviews with you. The other thing that I really, really, really enjoyed about this book was the writing. Philip Pullman, he has a way with words. He has a way of putting words into the book that don't get everyday usage. And it just read like a special gem when you came across them. And like I mentioned, there were two things that were a little bit quirky. One, I, I mentioned this I think twice already. The pacing was a little bit off, but it was off. And then two, I was a touch underwhelmed with the world creating. And again, I'm, I'm trying to cut Philip Pullman a lot of slack because he wrote this in 2000. And I'm, I'm, I read this book under the lens of, okay, well, I just read Lord of the Rings this year. You know, I've seen Avatar, I've seen Star Trek, Jurassic Park, Inception. That's what I'm thinking when I was thinking, okay, I have a knife that cut, can cut into all these different worlds. That's what I was thinking. And mm, we went to the world of the dead and the Malafa, but I was thinking he could have amplified it a, a lot more. But I also think, you know, Philip Pullman is, you know, part of the, his beauty and his charm is that there is a lot of action but there's a little bit of, of subtleness. He doesn't make things so, so, so apparent that, you know, you, you, you just think that you're not very smart reading this book because they tell you the same thing 10 times. You know, you really do have to pay attention and there is some subtlety in the creative process. So I did appreciate that as well. So overall, I would give this book a 4.5 star rating it was smashing. I really appreciated this. And I will be reading this book again, definitely. If you enjoyed this video and you want to join a book club, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be announcing our books shortly.
Until next time, everyone, I'm Lisa of Troy. Peace.